Glory to God, everyone, as you're joining on Share This Broadcast. Invite your followers. Greetings to everyone again. Greetings to everyone again. Blessings to you. Now, look, I want to deal with something real quickly here. Not having a mind of worry. Let me just deal with this real quickly. And let me take you to the scriptures concerning this. Let's go here. Philippians 4, 6 says, it says, be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Look what it says here. It says, do not be careful. It says, be careful for nothing. Now, you understand here that care is actually something greater than what you've been taught. Like sometimes you say, oh, you care about somebody, da, da, da. But we see in this text that care is actually a stressful thing. Care means that this bombards your mind. It steals your joy. It takes away your peace. It makes you can't feel the joy of the Lord or experience God's power in your life. So this is poison. Now, I want to give you a different spin to this as well. This type of care comes from the scorpion spirit. It comes from the scorpion spirit. Remember the word of God said that he give you power to tread upon the serpents and the scorpion. And all the powers of the enemy. So this type of care comes from the scorpion. It is the assignment of the scorpion. This type of care will make you so bombarded about what people think, what the devil thinks, what, or, or what the devil is saying to you through reports, diagnosis, or threats. That you'll crumble before God. You won't move in your authority or move in your faith or move in your assignment because of this type of fear. They'll steal all of that. It says, be careful for nothing. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4. Verse 6 and 7. Look at. Um, let's go to Matthew chapter six, verse 25. Let's go to Matthew six, 25. Matthew six, 25. Now I'm dealing with the mind here just real quickly before I go into something else. Because you have to take authority over your mind if you're going to dominate. And you have to learn how to do this. Not letting your mind drift from you. Because do you know if your mind is bad, you can't think about anything that God does want you to think. And that's going to interfere with your productivity. That's going to interfere with your joy. That's going to interfere with your health. Wow. So we see in Philippians 4, 6, it says, do not be careful for anything. Do not be careful for anything. So 
So there's nothing in this life that you should ever give your mind over to that steals your joy. Not one time. Never let anything, finances, because everything has a solution to it. Everything got the blood of the lamb backing so that it can be brought into a victorious state for you. Every single thing from your health, relationships, children, family, future, everything can be brought underneath subjection. Everything can be brought underneath subjection. Every single thing. And if it, watch this here. If it can't be brought underneath subjection, it's because it's God's will. So really, when we say brought into subjection, it, it really is being brought unto, under subjection because it's God's will. So let's, let's go here. I'm in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 says this. Do not worry about your life. Do not worry about your life. Look what it says here. Do not worry about your life. Do not worry about your life. Before we say anything else, he said, do not worry about your life. So what's going on in your life right now? Do not worry about your life. Let me tell you what worry is. and I'm, I'm going to give you a definition. To consecutively think about something that suffocates you. I want to give you that definition right there and think about it. To think about, to consecutively meditate on something that paralyzes your peace. To constantly think about something that creates a negative energy around you. Worry. I'm going to give you another definition. A thought process that disconnects you from enjoying God. Worry. A thought process that disconnects you from enjoying God. You see what I'm saying? So now you can't enjoy him. Because of all that, all that stuff in your, in your mind. Now, I want to go further on this one here. I want to go further on this one here. I want to go further on this one here. Now, saints, in another text, in Matthew 6, 25, it says, take no thought for your life. Now, this in itself is very powerful because the fact that it says take no thought, that means that do not even take the time mentally to have a thought about how am I going to be good? How am I going to get out of this? It says don't even take a thought for that. Now watch this. It didn't say take one thought just to find out. It didn't say just take two thoughts to find out. It says take no thought. Now imagine this. No thought at all. Not one thought, not one moment. It says, don't even let your mind go there. 
So saints, why would the father tell you to take no thought for your life? Obviously, he wants you to learn the law of enjoyment. The law of enjoyment. The law of enjoyment. Look at Luke chapter 12, verse 29. See, you can't enjoy yourself when you step over. So, so watch this here. Do you know that you are trespassing against God when you take thought about your life? Imagine that your mind is trespassing against God. Imagine when you take thought for your life, your mind is trespassing against God. So there's no power there. Take no thought for your life. So God is telling you here to never take a moment in time to consider Anything about your life. Because it's going to destroy your peace. It's going to make you start comparing yourself to others. It's going to make you unhappy. Imagine that there's no anointing for you to take thought for your life. There's not any grace to take thought for your life. God has not given you any power to take thought for your life. So if you ever find yourself taking thought for your life, there's no ability, supernatural ability of God for, for you to do that. Imagine how you're sinning against God when you take thought for your life. Because there's no grace to do that. There's no ability to do that. There's no power to do that. Let's go to Luke chapter 12, verse 29. See, you're going to have to get your mind right if you're going to live this God life. Because your mind is the only thing that can make you miss. After God done subdued the devil, now you got to subdue your mind. Because remember, your mind originally wanted to go in the direction of the devil. And when I say originally, I mean when you was born into the world, born of sin, or born of that, that fleshly nature. Your mind already wants to go the direction that God is not in. So your mind by default want to want to tread upon those grounds. So you got to take your mind and get your mind back into the right ground and say, no, we're not even going there. So saints, that's why you understand why Apostle Paul was telling you apostolically. He said, Casting down imaginations. These imaginations is in your mind. And it, it is in your mind because the mind is unmanaged. It's not trained. It's not uh, shepherded. Or, or I want to say you got to shepherd your mind rather. So you stay in surrender to God when you get a hold of your mind. So the secret to surrender to God, how do I surrender to God? Get a hold of your mind. Get a hold of your mind. The only way you can surrender to God is if you get a hold of your mind. You have to get your mind constantly back into the spirit flow. And the spirit will never guide you to take any thought for your life. The spirit will never guide you to worry about what you're going to eat, drink, or wear. So when you find yourself worrying, how am I going to get this? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? You out of the spirit. 
So if I'm not, if I'm not in the spirit, I'm in the flesh. So saints, it's so easy for you to step into the flesh. Worry is the friend of the flesh. Look at Luke chapter 12, verse 29. Luke 12, 29 says this. Now look at this, saints. Look at Luke 12, 29. Look what it says. It says, And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. Look what it says here. Do not seek what you shall eat, what you shall drink, or have an anxious mind. The Bible said not to have an anxious mind. Now, saints, the word of God reveals that there is a mindset where anxiety is the master. There's a mindset where anxiety rules. There's a mindset that is disorderly, in confusion, against divine timing, angry at divine instructions. Unwilling to comply with the spirit of the Lord. Imagine that there's a mindset that refuses the order of God. It hates the order of God. And it has no power of the spirit in this mindset. Luke chapter 12 verse 29 says, do not have an anxious mind. This mind does not have any type of all tied to it. So if your mind, now watch this here. This mind did not come from Jesus. It did not come from the spirit. It did not come from the word. It did not come from being born again. This mind comes completely from the gates of hell. So the gates of hell will transfer this mind to you if you don't know mind maintenance. The gates of hell will teach you how to flow in this mind full time and rob you of the power, the prosperity, and the presence of God and the promise of God. This anxious mind does not come from prayer. This anxious mind does not come from thanksgiving. This anxious mind is evil spirits playground. They develop this mind inside of you so that you're displeased God when he sees your meditation. This mind is to create enmity between you and God. The anxious mind will not bring you into good success, rest, or being blessed. This anxious mind despises all that God will teach you, God will show you, God will do for you. It does not Cooperate with the anointing. Let's deal with this real quick. Look what the Bible says in Genesis 8.21. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Look at Genesis chapter 8 verse 21. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from the youth. From the youth. The imagination of man's heart is evil from the youth. I'm in Genesis chapter 8 verse 21. And this is the Lord talking. 
The Lord said that the imaginations of man's heart is evil from youth. Genesis chapter 6. Verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. Saints, God looks at your mind. God studies your mind. He looks at what you're pondering upon. Saints, do you know that you can stop the anointing with thoughts and you can attract the anointing with thoughts? You can stop miracles with thoughts and you can attract miracles with thoughts. You can stop abundance with thoughts and you can attract abundance with thoughts. You can stop the power of God's word with thoughts. The tradition of men that make the word of God not effect is in the thoughts. Now, saints, this is how you understand the divine law of attraction really, really belongs to God. The law of attraction really is a divine law. Because look, the Lord is studying their mind. And watch, their mind produces the judgment of God. Look, look at what the Lord is saying. It says that their thoughts, their imagination, God saw. So he's looking at the mind. God is studying what their inward memory, their inward mind, their in inward imagination is studying. Look what it says here. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every man, watch this here. He not only saw the wickedness, but he saw the imagination. Wow. So you understand Ephesians 3, why he said that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think. Now you know why he said think. Because thinking has everything to do with the imagination. So he said God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think. Because God is looking at how you think. And if you're thinking the word, God can meet you at the place where you're thinking the word. If you're thinking miracles, if you're thinking multiplication, if you think in abundance, if you think in joy, if you think in peace, if you think in deliverance, you're attracting God in that realm. The Lord in Genesis 6 is looking at their mind. Watch this here. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. He saw the wickedness of man. And then look, and that every imagination of their thoughts of their heart was evil continually. So God is able to see their actions, but he's seeing their mindset. So watch this here. The difference between sin and iniquity is that sin is disobedience, but iniquity is a mindset. You can disobey God and in your heart say, oh, that was wrong. Let me stop that. But iniquity is when your mind is in a covenant with that action. Oh, my God. Sin is the disobedience, but iniquity is the thought life. It's the imagination. So watch this here. The difference between sin and iniquity is sin is is the act of disobedience. The, remember the Lord saw the wickedness. 
But then the Bible said that he saw that the thoughts of their heart was evil continually. Now that's the iniquity. He saw the wickedness that was sin. Then he saw that their thoughts were evil, uh, 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 evil continually. That's iniquity. So what did David say in the word of God? If iniquity be found in my what? In my heart. Ah! Notice he didn't say if iniquity be found in my actions. He said if iniquity be found in my heart. That's powerful. That's powerful. I don't, I don't even want to talk too fast because I don't want you to miss what I'm saying. That's powerful what I just said there. Complete Bible. He said, if iniquity be found in my heart, the Lord will not hear my prayer. Iniquity is found in the heart. Sin is found in the decision. Sin is a decision. Iniquity is a mindset. So if iniquity is found in your heart, that means that you're going to keep on in the direction that God don't want you to go. Because that's what sin does or iniquity does. It endorses sin. All right. Don't act like I don't. Never mind. Because only fools be. I ain't even going to say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Let's look at this. Proverbs chapter 3 says this. I want to go to. Let's go to verse 16. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand is riches and honor. I'm going to say this one more time. Length of days. Is in her right hand. And in her left hand. Is riches and honor. Let's deal with this. Let's deal with this. It's talking about. Wisdom and understanding. The angel of understanding is a woman. She work alongside of wisdom. She is in covenant with wisdom. That's why the word of God says that where all you're getting of wisdom, get understanding. Because cause, cause you got to get the full package. Because when you get understanding, she going to show you how to stay in the favor flow. She going to show you how to keep favor on your life. So you got to join them up together because they work better together. Don't just get wisdom by herself. Go get her friend, her BFF. 
Go get the BFF of wisdom. Her name is understanding. Her name is understanding. You got to include us. Say, come on, understanding. I receive you. Learning how to welcome wisdom and understanding in your prayer life. Learning how to invite wisdom and understanding to your mentality, to your decision. Because saints, when you receive the spirit of understanding, the angel of understanding, she going to show you how you should deal with your attitude. Because your attitude can destroy favor. Your joy can destroy, your, your, uh, your energy levels can destroy favor. Your words, your vocabulary can destroy favor. When you are introduced to the spirit of understanding, now you have access to all of God's kindness. So understanding is going to keep you in the realm of accessing what God said he would do. And it's going to keep you in the garden. It's going to keep you in the blessing. It's going to keep you in the overflow. You will not be alienated from God's promise. Because she going to show you how to keep the promise of God flowing. How to keep it on the up and up. And so, remember. Jesus said, not my will, your will be done. That's the spirit of understanding talking to the father. See, the Lord Jesus gave you the, the behavior, how to flow in the spirit of understanding. Remember what he said? Not my will, your will be done. He told the father, that's how the spirit of understanding flow. The spirit of understanding creates an unselfishness about you. The spirit of understanding make you unselfish. It make you consider God more than you consider anybody else. The way that the spirit of understanding operates in is that it creates a hunger inside of you to be correct. You don't want to be stuck in error, the wrong direction. The spirit of understanding uh, creates an appetite for accuracy. Some of y'all can write my window, wisdom doors down. The spirit of understanding will make you long for God's perfect way in you. Now, the spirit of understanding will deliver you from wrong attitudes, wrong meditation, and filthy memory. Because when your memory is filthy, the past is able to access your present. And demons are able to corrupt your atmosphere today. When your memory is not purged, Yesterday can destroy today. And an old focus can corrupt the current focus. Praise God. Praise God. Now, Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. 
Proverbs chapter 3, verse 16 says, The length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand is riches and honor. Now, God got riches in this angel hand reserved for you. Wisdom and understanding got riches in their hand. So they have money distributing authority. When you yield to wisdom and understanding, you are activating wealth manifesting power. You're activating the distribution system of provision. Think about this. When you yield to wisdom and understanding, riches and honor. You know what honor always does? It makes people have a, a, have a joy. To help you. Honor makes people have an excitement. To benefit you. To push you. Honor is so powerful. Because it is the spirit of God at work in one's heart. That compels them. To pitch you as first priority. The spirit of the Lord will compel them. To have compassion for you. Honor. Honor is so powerful because it, it is an impartation from the Father. That cultivates assistant, assistance urges. A urge for assistance towards your situation. Honor gives people an urge to assist you. Or gives them an energy to bless you. Or gives them a stamina to attend to you. It gives them an endurance to increase you. It gives them a passion to prosper you. It gives them a deep desire to experience your success occur. Imagine that. I gave you some powerful definitions of honor. Think about it. Some powerful definitions of honor. Imagine that. Look what John 12, 26 say. If any man serves me and follows me where I am, he will be also. My father will honor him. Meaning my father will have an energy to invest in him. A passion to promote him. A deep desire to take him to the next level. A urge to increase him. Now you see that how riches and honor go together. While God is honoring you, you become a rich. You're not just being honored, you're becoming rich while you're being honored. Because while he's honoring you, the more that you're being invested into, the more you're obtaining, the more you're possessing. So you're becoming rich because of the investment of God. And this is what happens when you yield to wisdom and understanding. And you let these angels move. I want to say this. Sowing is the wisdom and understanding of the Father in heaven. Seed time and harvest is the understanding of the Father in heaven. Moving and sowing is the understanding, the wisdom of the Father in heaven. 
It produces his favor. It produces honor. It produces riches. My sowing activates God's passion to provide for me in an extensive and lavish way. My sowing permits the Lord to take care of me the way that he wants to take care of me. The wisdom and understanding of God is in the seed sown. The wisdom and understanding of God is the ability also to take what I possess and invest it into the gospel. Sow it into my man of God. I have a divine link to all God's provision, power, prosperity, pleasure, and peace through sowing. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 16. Length of days are in her right hand. I want to say this. Sowing gives me a long life. You remember Psalm 91? With long life I'll satisfy you. All satisfaction flow through the seed. Through sowing money into the gospel. That's how it works. Length of days are in her right hand. And in her left hand are riches. I activate riches with the seed. I activate length of days with the seed. I activate honor with the seed. Now, we know from the Lord Jesus that the Father not going to be the only one honoring you. Because saints, even though the word of God says here that the Lord said that my father will honor you in John 12, 26. He said that the father will honor you. Luke 6, 38 says that given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. So you see two realms of honor being revealed. In John 12, 26, he said the father going to honor you. But in Luke 6, 38, he says, people on earth going to honor you. All through cheerful giving, all through sowing, all through taking the money I have and sowing it into the gospel. The Lord gave me a twofold promise of supply that I'll have both the honor of the Father, him investing in me. That means I'm an heir of God. If the father is investing in me and the father is the richest, how will I not become rich? Now you understand why the Bible say in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 16, that in her left hands is riches and honor. Now saints, if you left-handed, that's unusual because the normality is right-handedness. Like most people are right-handed. So if you left-handed, it's unusual. I want you to see this. God is saying that in the unusual hand, there is riches and honor. So, so sowing is an unusual route. Because not everybody going to move in sowing. It's an awkward route. Because not everybody going to move in sowing. It'll take you out your comfort zone. It'll take you out of your tradition. It'll take you out of your struggles. It'll take you out of your mistakes. It'll take you out of your delays. It'll take you out of your lack, your attack. It'll take you out of your slack. So it's unusual. It's the left hand. The riches and the wealth, the honor is not in the right hand. It's in the left hand of the angel. Because it's in an unusual position. But he said, watch this here. In your left hand, in the left hand is riches and honor. I tap into that riches and honor because this is what I'm doing towards God. I'm, I'm honoring him with my money. Riches is money. So if the money coming to me is because I release the money to God, he multiplying that money and bringing it back to me. 
God multiplying the money that I gave to him and bringing it back to me. That's why riches is occurring in my life. That's multiplied money. So this is money that I sold. It is multiplied and it comes back to me in the realm of riches. And the, the reason why honor is now my harvest and honor is activated in my life, occurring in my life, because this is what I gave to God. So what Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 say, honor the Lord with your substance. Honor the Lord with your substance. So if you honor the Lord with your substance, this is the result. You want to receive honor in return. And how did you honor God with your substance? So if you receive honor, that means that God going to take his substance and honor you with it. And if God honors you with his substance, he is rich. So you have no choice but to come rich. Glory to God. 